Good morning. We are coming at you from a very different area than my last couple of videos. We're out here on the east coast in KwaZulu Natal, um, in this sort of Isimangalisu wetland area, a wetland park. Um, we're just hiking through some coastal forests at the moment. Gonna see what we're gonna get after. There's a lot of um, fossorial stuff here, some legless skinks some dwarf burrowing skinks, lots of sort of arboreal snakes, and yeah, a whole bunch of really nice stuff. This area is well known for things like green mambas, forest cobras, marble tree snakes, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So yeah, we just have got here. Um, it's pretty cool, it's, it's overcast, so nice conditions, and we're gonna see what we're gonna get after today. Hopefully we have some good finds for the weekend and hopefully we'll get a full video out of this one. Just got to watch out for the, the hippos and the other dangerous animals here because it's a little bit sketchy. Well, there you go. We're on the board. This is just a little plain grass frog. Got it under this log in the background. Um, let's go and hopefully you can turn us some snakes. Tropical house gecko, tropical house gecko eggs. Let's have a look under there. More tropical house geckos. We're going ballistic. Yeah, these are pretty much what we need to see because where there are tropical house geckos, you're generally gonna find some some snakes. Hopefully, we got another blind to do upstairs. So let's have a look. You can check the rats and the mice have been eating up all the stuff here. Of course, there's trash. Like spiders, some more hemidactylus. Nothing under there. Nothing under there. So we're just out here in these <coughs> bird hides, um, flipping these sort of blinds. You can see they've been sort of eaten by rodents. We just flipped over this one. I was just telling Odin about the marble tree snakes. And there you go. It's a decent size one. They get a, a bit bigger than this. Let's see if I can get him with ants. Do I actually want to grab him? I just want to, because there's a huge wasp nest right above our heads here. Um, there you go. Nice looking marble tree snake. These guys are generally pretty bitey, but this guy seems pretty relaxed. He's obviously um, in these bird blinds here, hunting, hunting frogs and like little geckos that we've seen quite a lot of that are chilling under here. But we are going to take him outside here just to get a couple of photographs in a natural sort of setting. But yeah, this is a cool one. I don't think, well, I wouldn't have shown you guys these on the videos before. So yeah, marble tree snake. A nice little arboreal sort of rear fanged snake that just sits in these sort of bird hides chasing after frogs and lizards. Pretty rad. And as you can see, you would have seen, I'll try to get them in the clips, but right outside here, there's a whole pot of hippos sitting in this flay. So that's pretty sick. Just a better look at that marble tree snake once you just got it out of the little blind there into a bit of sunlight um as you can see they're beautifully marked beautifully marked snakes and they're really arboreal so you can see if they they sort of arch their necks like this and do this defensive sort of display and he's lunged at me a couple of times trying to get me sort of right on the face so gotta watch out for that it looks like he's actually just had a meal um probably in one of those geckos that we saw in the blinds there um, but as you can see, they're really gorgeous snakes, so we're just going to let him hang out here and you'll see how they just climb and go right back into the foliage. So this is just dreadful. Um, just cruised on this 
pretty fresh deer are variegated slug eater. Um, it's not an animal that I see regularly at all, um, even up here. And this is like this is a really really big one. Um, so for those who're sensitive to a bit of gore, but yeah, this is a pretty pretty rad find for the area. Um, not so much that it's dead, but yeah, hopefully we can see another one. But that's really unfortunate. This actually looks like a big female um, that could possibly be grooming as well while having babies. So that's yeah, we're gonna carry on and see if we can't turn up anything else. So here's something that doesn't look like a big deal, but it's a pretty big deal. Um, at least for me anyway. This is a uh, Afrotyphlops fornicinii. Fornicinii is blind snake. It actually represents the smallest blind snake species in South Africa and one that I've never seen before, um, which is in, which is just, yeah, I'm actually a bit of a loss, which is incredible. I've been coming to this area for at least 10, 12 years. I've pretty much found every snake species in this region, um, but I've never seen these guys before. Um, and Odin and I sort of just got here, just started flipping stuff, and we managed to turn one up. Uh, this, this individual is pretty much as almost as big as they get. Um, it's about 13, 14 centimeters, although I guess they, they do get a little bit bigger. Um, we're going to grab a couple of photographs of this guy, um, just load it up for iNaturalist because they aren't commonly found at all. Uh, this is probably only the, if I had to guess, maybe the seventh or eighth one that I know of that's been seen and recorded. Um, so quite a big deal, so super excited um, for the sort of second snake of the trip, so that's pretty rad. So, so I'll take you guys on a little viewpoint here. Sorry about the wind, but have a look at this. This is absolutely insane. I've never seen this much water um, at the super. And we're gonna do a quick pan. <laughs> so you can see there's loads of hippos. Let's see if I can zoom in. <laughs> I don't think you can see them all too well, but right in the middle of the frame there, there's part of five or six hippos. And this is a large sort of freshwater lake, so there's just hippos and crocodiles and all sorts of cool stuff. Right, so we're going to carry on. We've got some cool herbs so far. We're going to see what else we're going to get. Cool, so you can't really see, but there's some hippos way down there. But now you can. We won't get out, so we don't want to get eaten alive by hippos. See, this is the uh, coastal dwarf burrowing skink. You can see if we zoom in right, well, we've got to zoom in real close. He's got remnants of tiny vestigial limbs here. They essentially just um, little nodes of, of limbs. Um, these are a really interesting group of animals. Up here in the uh, Ismagaliso, there's about four or, or five species. Um, this is one that lives in these soft coastal dune sands. And yeah, as soon as you sort of put them back, I don't know if you'll do it now, they usually sort of burrow straight away into the substrate. And then yeah, usually once they go like this, they're sort of impossible to catch again. Because um, their tails do break off, so you always want to try. Avoid that as much as possible. You don't want to cause any more stress than you need to. You can see he's digging under this humus leaf litter here, and there he goes. So we're going to go on a little boardwalk. Hoping, see if we can't find some chameleons, this or chameleons. But that sign's apt because the river, or well, the estuary mouth, and the estuary is like right down there. So that's where all the hippos are. And we're going to be walking along there, which could be pretty sketchy, but we're going to see what we're going to see. Um, and if we see anything, I will check in and you guys will see what we find. Cool. So we just got Sotaro or chameleon. This is Bradopodium Sotaro. Only found in the coastal regions of 
KwaZulu Natal and Zuland, and they go right up the way just into southern Mozambique. This is a really pretty looking specimen. So we're gonna grab a couple of photographs and then we're gonna see if we can't turn up any others. Cool, so it's now day two, it's Sunday. Um, we just took a little walk. We're heading to a little abandoned site over here. And the first thing I flipped was just this broken piece of paving. And we got this guy, which is pretty rad. This is a giant legless kink. Um, you would have seen the yellow cape legless kinks on my other videos. Um, but you can see this guy, he's the biggest representative of the genus. He's got that big sort of beak look on his face. Um, this is quite a small one. They get, I don't know, probably <clears throat> twice the size, maybe three times the size. So we're going to grab a couple of photos of this guy while he's still cold and then we're just going to put him back under his piece of concrete which is literally just really crappy and here on the side of the road. But that's hopefully a good start for the day and we hopefully turn up a whole bunch of other herps. Rad. These giant legless skinks are just absolutely mental. Some of my favorite species of legless lizards up here. Like I said, this is quite a small one. This is probably only 25, 20, 20, 25 centimeters or so. So they get a heck of a lot bigger. Um, you can see this dude just wants to go. But I'll just give you a quick look again at that little beak with the tiny little eyes of the eyelids. Um, and yeah, that's the giant legless skink. Okay, we're just going to release this guy after some photographs. Um, You'll see, he'll just go back into his leaf litter under this little brick. Come on, I just want him to go underneath so he doesn't get eaten by something. Cool, there he goes, and we can see what else he's going to get off. So right where that giant legless skink is, just flipped another little rock here, and this is a tropical husky echo. Um, this is a small one, they really common, and you would have seen when we flipped the marble tree snake yesterday. Um, we turned up quite a few of these. This is quite a small one as you can see So we're not gonna mess with him. We're just gonna let him chill there and I'm gonna gently put his rock back So here's another greater leaf folding frog. You can see how much better they look than the one We saw last night while looking for chameleons. It's this really cool vertebral dark stripe and then the two pale stripes on either side um, Oh, there he goes After giving us the runaround on this wall behind us, um, it's just a striped skink. Um, you can see he's missing quite a big chunk of his tail, so not the prettiest specimen, but yeah, something I don't see down in Cape Town anymore. So it's quite nice to see them up here. This, like I said, this is quite a small one. Um, they get about sort of double the size. Obviously, you usually have nice, pretty long tails, but. Yeah, nice to get another herp. It's been a little bit quiet, so let's see if we can't get after anything else. This is uh, Bredopodium Sitaro. <laughs> He's on a bit of a mission. This is the Sitaro's dwarf chameleon. You can see he's got those really nice blues and greens and orange flashes on the side there. Um, yeah, just a really nice endemic chameleon to the area. Come on, brother. You can see how small he is in relations to my finger they're long and sort of spindly animals with these long sort of sharply pointed heads um, but we're pretty much done getting photos of them he can go back into his tree and carry it on and do his chameleon things This is wild. I just flipped this concrete board and I've got the tail end of a black file snake. Uh, it's only the second or third one I've ever flipped, so pretty rad. But let me get him out and I'll show you guys what he looks like. So here's this black file snake that we just pulled out of the rubble. Um, super, super good find. Um, it's not something you really flip. They're more of a road cruise species. Um, you can see Odin just making a noise over there thinking he's going to flip another one. Um, yeah, absolutely incredible snakes and if you 
have a close look here, you can see they've got these heavily keeled scales. Um, pretty flat, sort of pretty flat head, and they're pretty much uh, skink and reptile specialists, so they don't eat mice and small mammals and stuff like that. Um, for soil and sort of a rarely seen species, so this is pretty much going to be one of the cooler finds of the weekend, although we still have a whole day tomorrow and we found some really good stuff today already, the Afro Typhlops that Faunasan is blind. So I ran out of storage while I was filming the clip um, with the black file snake, but here's just it um, in a little bit of, well, a bit of natural habitat rather than under the lump of concrete. You can see he's got those heavily keeled scales and it gets the name of the file snake from the sort of double row or the single killed row of scales going down the spine. Um, this is a smaller cousin of the, well it's actually a different genus, of the common file snakes which are quite sought after. But yeah, there he goes and we're going to carry on. Here's just a little clip of the uh, Sinatel green snake that we got. It was just sort of hanging out on these dry branches which makes him pretty easy to spot. But they are generally the first ones to sort of shoot off and get away so quite stoked to get a hand on this one you can see it's an eastern Natal green snake the black between the scales the dark crossbars on the back of the neck there as well as the sort of bright orange uh, iris of the eye which sets it apart from the spotted bush snake um, so yeah it's really stoked green snakes are one of my favorite snakes in the country so well the genus as a whole so it's always a pleasure to see these guys especially when I don't get to see a lot of them down in the Cape. So back in Isimangalisu for a little while, pretty, pretty rad to get hold of them again. And that's going to be the end of the video and the end of the weekend. Thank